Welcome everyone to another observability lab. Today's topic is composite site reliability guardians. And I was introduced to this topic by Stan, who I invited. Hi, Stan, how are you? Doing well, how about yourself, Andy? Very good, very good. I was really excited when you showed me how you are implementing composite SRGs, as we call the site reliability guardians, with Dynatrace integrated in your pipeline. But really what I would like from you now is to explain to our audience, what problem do we actually solve with this? Or what do you solve with this? And how does this actually look like? Because I know you've built a demo um, that is uh, really fantastic to see. Of course, of course. Yeah, so I'm happy to uh, kind of jump on in and kind of start to describe where the composite SRG concept came from mm -hmm. and why it's so important to teams like myself in my previous role to have this top level view of uh, uh, the health of my application. So, you know, with standard CI CD pipelines, a developer will make a, a change into a repository that will start to build dependencies, deploy their change to a stage, let's say dev in this case. And before we promote that change, we want to make sure that the deployment went well, right? Mm -hmm. So normally, or uh, previously before a composite site reliability guardian, I would go into this application and look at some crafts or look at logs and just make sure everything that I did was correct and didn't impact the application. So then I would say, okay, pipeline, promote that change, go to the next stage. And I'd have to do that all over again. Same thing until it re re, uh, reaches production. Mm -hmm. And now I start all over again. I make a new change and I have to, when I push that next change, validate, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the things that I like to call out is even though it's a single icon here, an application really is not just a single, simple, as you can see here, mm -hmm. an icon. Mm -hmm. It's actually a little bit more complex, right? It is. So if we kind of double click into that, modern applications are actually comprised of multiple services. And when a developer makes a change, they're not making that change to an application. They're making a change to a service. Now, I mean, as all good application developers are, they'll, nothing ever goes wrong, right, Andy? Of course, <laughs> never. We never broke anything by making a change in a fragile system. <laughs> never, never. But, you know, sometimes things do happen. But in this modern application design, if something was to go wrong, because you have all these interconnected services, that uh, uh, change that did not go correctly can cascade throughout your entire application. And that's where sometimes the difficulty of finding the root cause of a problem can come from. Mm -hmm. So now we at Dynatrace, we're experts at this. We can actually, with Davis AI, find that root cause and kind of help your meantime to identify. But there are still some indicators that you know that you need to observe in your application that indicate the health, right? So that's what we call SLIs. We can leverage SLIs to track the health of a service and indicate to us how that application is doing. And here at Dynatrace, if you do leverage SLIs, what we have is an application called Site Reliability Guardian. So you can roll up all of these SLIs, in this case, latency errors, traffic, and saturation, into one view that has a heat map, it keeps track of it, and keeps track of all that health for you. Mm -hmm. And I would almost extend this, uh, Stan, because uh, while these are the four golden signals, I think that, you know, at least that's the term that has been floating around uh, for many years, you can even use additional indicators. Like what I see a lot is, uh, are there any vulnerabilities that were introduced to a change? Uh, are there any critical or new logs that came in? So beyond these four golden signals, you can use the Guardian and validate, as you perfectly said, that the health of an application and that can span across any of the signals we have in our observability platform. And what's interesting as well, the site reliability guardian isn't just limited to SLIs and our SLOs, right? It, you can be driven by Grail and query, like you're saying, pretty much yeah. anything that can be used as an indicator of health. Exactly, yeah. Now, this is where things started to come together for me, where I was looking at this and, you know, normally we would create an SRG for service A and we would create one for service B and service C. But like I was saying, that's not representative of the application. Mm -hmm. So what if we can take all of these SRGs that we suggest our, our customers set up and roll that up into what I'm calling an application level SRG? 
now we have something that represents what's bounded in that green box, something that we can quickly ascertain the health of our service. Mm -hmm. And taking that one step further, if we revisit our CICD pipeline, now we can help developers uh, reduce toil and reduce uh, manual labor by replacing those uh, stage gates mm -hmm. with that application level SRG. So now when I go to make a deployment, I mean, I'd still maybe want to check on some things, right? But I can start to automate some of that process of looking at key health indicators. So when I make that change, now I can have an automatic promotion. Or if something does go wrong in the QA stage, right? I can have that indicator and say, hey, wait, something's not right. We mm -hmm. uh, Some thresholds have been breached. Some SLIs have been breached. Um, let's even roll back that change. So now I'm not affecting other developers in that stage. Um, and that that's really the beauty and the value of this application level SRG is to help automate some of the developer processes, but also give other business value of how is my how is my application doing mm -hmm. just from one client. Yeah, I also like the term a lot applica application level SRG. Um, I know technically composite SRGs, but I, I think you should think around uh, just using that word. It's a nice and it brings it to the point. That's fair. That's fair. We're still we're hashing out the naming on this. It's yeah, a, it's yeah, a new yeah. concept. <laughs> so if, if I may, I'm going to take a jump to our Dynatrace platform where I can actually sh show some of this working. Yeah, um, please do so. And the first place that I want to jump to is that view of how is my application doing? How is my application performing? So up at the top left here is that single go, no go, as I call it of how the application and all the SRGs and SLOs are performing. Um, in fact, here you can see how the historically the SRGs have run. And this is all being fed by mock data just for the purposes of this demo. Mm -hmm. So I've mocked up uh, four services that comprise this uh, application, all the way from front end to billing. Um, so now what that looks like on the back end, uh, what's, or rather what's feeding this dashboard is the Site Reliability Guardian app. So here you'll see I have five uh, SRGs in total, but specifically what's comprised of, as I showed in the slides, is the service level SRGs, so billing, mm -hmm. checkout, front end, and then our top level SRG application health. So one of the things that you'll see here is some of these have a tag called application super great mm -hmm. app. Mm -hmm. In order to orchestrate all of this, we need to do some automation. And fortunately, the Dynatrace platform has automation baked in, in the form of a workflow. So what happens here, I have it on a set schedule, but you can also integrate it with a pipe, a CICD pipeline, mm -hmm. is I first find all the, the guardians that are tied to a service that I need to run. Next, I will start each one of those guardians. And then the last step, I take my top level, my application SRG that will inspect all of the subsequent SRGs and report a main status. So here, if we now dive in, if I go to the top level SRG, what I get to see is how my application has been performing. And in our scenario, as commits are being made. And so here I can actually see at a point there were mm -hmm. some failures. But currently, everything in the last iteration was successful. And so billing, A-OK, -okay, checkout, no problem, front end and scheduler, mm -hmm. A-OK. -okay. And from here, I can actually dive in when there's a problem into my individual uh, SRGs. So if I go into billing service, now I get to see, OK, I had an issue with CPU saturation, latency, and traffic during uh, 2.45 AM to 3 AM. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way to troubleshoot uh, when you're you're kind of looking for that that basis. You say, okay, how's my application doing? Oh, it's not great. Front end experienced an issue. Click and go straight to that front end SRG. See which SLOs are breached, and now you can start to uh, decrease that MTTI and MTTR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a very elegant solution, especially because you empower every individual service owner to define their own SRG for their service. You know, we said earlier, the four golden signals is something that we promote, but then you can add every service has their own indicators, right? Maybe some cues are in there, as we said earlier, some 
maybe some critical uh, log messages that should be validated. Uh, so you give every a service owner their definition of health, and then you are aggregating it up to an overall application status that is based on the individual status of every single SOG. And then when I mean, you're doing it here on the schedule, which is nice, especially for, let's say, a production environment, that's a good thing to do. And then I think you also said something about we could now integrate this into a pipeline and call in this from a pipeline as you're pushing new builds through. So as part of your quality gates or whatever you call it, you can validate that your service is healthy and also all of your other depending services that make up that application are still healthy. I, I, it's almost like you're teeing me up, Andy. I appreciate it. So let's jump to that part of the demo, shall we? So mm -hmm. in GitHub, I've set up a repository and I'm just going to do a, a, a commit just to trigger this. So I have a GitHub action set up that anytime a commit is made, it's going to run the workflow to run all these SRGs and inspect the result of that application level SRG. So that this way, now I, just from the pipeline and automation alone, can tell uh, how the health of my commit had went. Mm -hmm. um, you, you might want to, in, uh, in practice, put some delays in so that this way your code has some time to kind of churn through the environment. Mm -hmm. But just for the purposes of this demo, it runs instantly. So I'm going to make a, a blank commit. Um, then I'm going to say git push. And I'm now going to jump back over. So let me show you what it looks like when I was validating the SRG, right? So here you can see my script. It's kicking off that workflow. Mm -hmm. It waits for everything to run. Once it's done running, it'll check the result of the SRG. And if it passes, then great. We're good to go. I've already now automated some of that validation that I was going to have to do manually. But now I've, ahead of pushing this change, introduced the degradation to the environment mm -hmm. so that this way um, we can see what a failure scenario looks like. So currently in the background, the SRG and Dynatrace um, and the workflows are running. So based on the implementation at this point, we need to wait some time for those SRGs to complete. And once those SRGs complete, because I've uh, introduced that degradation, mm -hmm. I expect this SRG to fail. Yeah. And as you said earlier, right, this is, there's a couple of different scenarios that come to my mind. As you're doing this in your pre-prod environment, I assume you deploy a change, you run some tests, you, you introduce maybe some load testing, uh, whatever it is, and then you validate the outcome or in a production environment, if you're doing a blue-green deployment, if you're doing a canary release, then you would do this after, let's say, you know, five minutes, you want to validate. Um, did that traffic that just came in that hit the new version uh, experience any problems? Yes or no? Yeah. And so in this case, we retrieved the status fail. So mm -hmm. an error was encountered with the SRGs. So however you would like to implement this in your yeah. deployment scenario, now we have, if I come back up to all my actions, we have something that failed and you can trigger on that however you need to if you want to do a lot of rollback etc cetera, etc cetera. now let's jump back to that dashboard right mm -hmm. so we have an issue mm -hmm. now this dashboard has transformed from everything's green to how do i root cause how do i triage so overall which is what the, the pipeline was tied to the application has a problem of all the services that my application is comprised of, it's the scheduler. I'm going to jump straight to the scheduler SRG. And in an instant, I can see, OK, mm -hmm. there's an issue with saturation and there's an issue with errors. Mm -hmm. So now, just in a few clicks, I was able to jump in. And you can augment this dashboard as well. So for example, Davis apparently has detected a problem, Andy. Mm -hmm. Let's go check that out. So now I can jump in. And oh, scheduler, custom error. Um, again, this is all mock data uh, yeah. for the purpose of the demo. But if there was something that happened in the environment and Davis picked up on it, it would generate a problem card. Yeah. And so from just one source from a top level, anyone in the business can kind of ascertain and take pick their own journey as they need to. Yeah. Um, and that's where I think the, the real power of this dashboard and composite SRGs comes through.
Yeah, and I think this is also thanks for adding the Davis problem here because I often get the question, what if I don't pick the right SLIs for my, uh, my validation? What if something else happens? Well, this is why you have Dynatrace and Davis for, because Davis will alert you on any type of anomaly. But the reason why the SOG and the SLIs and SLOs are so important is because you know what a definition of health looks for you, at least from the metrics that you and your team have come up with. And this is why it's great that you have the SRG, define it on a service level, aggregate it up to an application. But if anything else would happen, then Dynatrace would pick it up with Davis and say, hey, there's an issue. And I think this is also a good uh, lesson learned what I've seen. If Davis detects problem in production, but none of your currently defined SLOs is picking up on it, well, this is something that you would do in a post-mortem. In a post-mortem, you would say, hey, we had this problem. What are some of the indicators that uh, we should now include in the future in our guardians because we want to make sure that something like this is already caught in our CICD pipeline. Uh, here I've seen things like, you know, um, queue sizes or connection pools not properly sized, and these are early indicators. And so uh, what we learn from production, from failures that are picked up, we can then extend and expand our SRGs so that we prevent these things in the future. This is really awesome, Stan. Uh, really nice to see how what you've built here. Yeah, no, and thank you for giving me the platform and the time to showcase this. I think this is, it was really valuable for me when I was a, a software developer to have something that can take what was very tedious to inspect health and right. automate it. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that we can now uh, provide that for developers with the Dynatrace platform as well. Very cool. Hey, um, Stan, thank you so much. I know this is just the beginning of your journey, uh, especially with these use cases. There are more to come. And uh, the, everything that you saw today, folks, check out the links in the video. We will link to SRGs, to other videos. I know you had your own uh, Git repository here. So we'll try to get also the Git repository, some of the content that you built uh, to the public Dynatrace repositories. But folks, if you have questions, just leave a comment. That's always good on the video, whether you watch this on YouTube or on LinkedIn or any other platform. Uh, and Stan, thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andy.